Joel on True Centurions, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command, where I'm Brad Spussman, and I'm Commodore Tech of the Dreadnought R.A.S. Gavia, as we continue our campaign against the United Federation of Planets, and we are doing rather well. We've managed to cut our way through several Federation Dreadnoughts, and are currently laying siege to the planet at 13-9. Still out on patrol, we have no reason to go home, so let's keep the battle rolling, and maybe grab this planet. Fortunately, it's going to send us out on a shipyard assault, and we've managed to avoid most of these so far. We've really tried to avoid getting into major siege missions with the Gavia. We've tried to focus more on being fast, nimble, and going after, you know, enemy cruisers that we catch out, which is sort of the whole concept of our ship. Unfortunately, High Command has finally said it's time for the Gavia to go to war against something that's a little bit more substantial. And here we are, currently squaring off against a heavy cruiser, and we know there's something else in the distance, supported by IKV Relentless, which is a C-8, and IKV Nemesis, another Klingon C-8. Quite a bit of firepower here, is that C-8? Yeah, C-8 VK, so a carrier, and a C-8KR, uh, some kind of upgraded cruiser. And a BCV, this is a Kirov class, I believe. Uh, which should be armed with four missile launchers, or it could be some kind of carrier version. Let's zoom on over and zoom on in. And so she is a carrier variant, you can tell, because she's got these doors right here, uh, indicating to us that she has fighter launch bays. Girl is lined up and on target. Let's get that forward shield reinforced. We know the Federation likes to engage at about a range of 30, but once you start cloaking, they try and shoot a little bit sooner than that, just to see if they can't get the hits in on you. And... Uh, a BCV ought to be carrying... Yep, there he goes. He's launched his fighters now. He's fired his weapons at maximum range. No photon torpedo launch. That's actually really surprising to me. Oh, there they go. He's fired his group of photon torpedoes. They've all managed to hit... Well, most of them managed to hit the forward shield. But he didn't manage to break through the reinforcement, which is a really nice position for us to be in. Now, here comes the issue. How many fighters are we dealing with? Two groups of four. Okay, that's the problem. So I was going to question whether or not we should engage these uh, fighters with our plasma torpedoes or if we should try and go after you with the weapons. So we're going to do this. Pseudo torpedoes at you. Targeting you. And then wait for him to wild weasel. He did. Okay, just in time. F type. F type. And that didn't go nearly as well as I had hoped. And, oh crap, we took way more damage than we needed to right there. Let's pull off into a distance. Uh, we messed that one up. We messed that one up badly. Luckily, he managed to clear his own mines off of us, so that works to our favor. Didn't want to do that. I want to do this button. I constantly mess up the C key and the X key. I'm not sure why, but it's a mistake I seem to be making often. So we managed to take way more damage than we were supposed to take in that hit. And, uh, I think, we, though, we did manage to get rid of all of his, uh, all of his fighter groups. And now we're mostly able to engage at will. Our RNS-type plasma torpedoes weren't wasted, so we will still have them to be able to engage against the Paris. And our R-type plasma torpedo is there we go. And let's keep the uh, shields away from them. This is actually a pretty big problem. Not having a forward shield and being on a siege mission is an issue. And I was hoping that I could blast through those fighters by hitting them with plasma torpedoes, but I hesitated too long to start firing our plasma at them. Uh, next, what would have made far more sense is if we had uh, gone into cloak. Let the fighters waste their firepower on our invisibleness, because they almost can never hit us when we're cloaking. And then decloak and engage them from behind. But we didn't manage to do that. And uh, we've taken quite a bit of damage. Although our shield reinforcement rate is such that we can get triple greens, even though our shield only just came back online. Let's pop in here. We do need a little bit of engine repair. We also need to repair that phaser one, which is a very important phaser one on our ship, as the remains of the Paris drift on by. Poor, poor ship. Our point defense system should be more than able to handle anything that they're going to throw at us. Yes, they do, but look at how badly that affects our shield reinforcement. Oh, not good at all. So, I think we need to... I don't want to go too fast simply because your phasers become less effective at point defense when you increase the speed of time. And also, we don't have enough... Ooh, wow, we actually really do not have enough systems or phaser systems in order to keep up with the incoming missile barrage. That's actually a major concern that we have now. Um, oh boy. I'm not sure what to do about this. So prudence dictates that we pull off to one and not go after the center one. 
because if we go after the center one, we'll have the least number of defensive systems. By the way, the reason why we keep slowing down when these missiles come in, as you just saw, if we don't do that, the missiles get through anyway. Which is kind of annoying. But yeah, the the game doesn't quite understand how to handle that. Let's pull into defense with these vessels. Hopefully they will get into the fight sometime soon and also provide some sort of cover for us. Oh, we're an idiot. Of course we can do this. There we go. Look at all the missiles just disappear. And now they will continue to waste their fire on the Klingons. Hopefully, hopefully that'll aggro them so they'll go after the uh, star bases. They are ZFRDs, which tells us they're Merak ones. So these will be extend extended rack missile launchers. And increase the speed of the ship just a bit. And we're at full time and relatively good on repairs. Technically, these two phaser banks do need a little bit of a patchwork, but they're more or less fine. We're not going to bother taking the time to fix them. Now, the downside to fighting a star dock is a star dock has a huge number of tractor beams. So if you're a missile firing race, you can't get through that way. But it also has a whole bunch of shuttles, which is a pain. Come out of cloak. And did you fire those at us? No, you fired those at the fighters. Excellent. So forward shields to the maximum reinforcement. The fighter's not able to break through. And we're going to go hit two and fire all the pseudos. Let's see if I can't get you to dump that shuttle that I need you to. Because that way we'll be able to basically just blitz. Yep, there it is. They've launched their shuttlecraft. I was hoping the fighters would go after it, but they did not. Uh, unfortunately, this station is not going to increase speed. I need to kill it. Okay, we got it. All stop. Forward shields to full power. Because we are going to take a little bit of damage here. All up in select. Prepare to blow up the shipyard. As soon as the attack ship goes away... We're going to lay into it with everything we have. Knocked down his forward shields and took out most of his stuff. And we are currently now holding his missiles at bay. Took out a shuttle bay, that's going to be important. We will be able to basically just sit here and blast him away now. And he's lost one of his missile launchers, which is probably his most important defensive system. Let's get the phases back online to be able to cause more damage. Not really too concerned with anything that he can launch our way. Continue to fire. Keep firing all weapons. And as long as you don't have a shuttle bay, I don't care what you can do. Because I have enough firepower to basically annihilate you. Unfortunately, being Romulan, it takes us three turns to charge anything. Last of the Merak shipyards is already under constant attack from the two C8 dreadnoughts and will come in slowly. No reason to rush. I'm sure they'll handle it all for us. Although I'm not happy about the amount of damage that we took. It wasn't necessary. Uh, it was purely because we made a mistake and it's going to cost us. I don't want to go home, but we may have to. So hopefully not, but you never quite knew. So 450 prestige is a really decent amount of prestige. I think I'm going to risk it. I think we're going to stay out here just a little bit longer. Shipyard assault or planetary assault? We're going to go for the planetary. I know, the planetaries are harder than shipyards technically, but it's a planetary assault. They're a little bit more interesting. Hit that red alert, increase that speed. We are escorted by... RIS Redemption, which is a little tiny frigate. Oh no. Currently squaring off against a dreadnought of the DNF class and a PL2. Okay. So not a super heavily armed planet. That works for us. I was anticipating yet another one of those phaser armed planets with phaser fours and a whole bunch of photon torpedoes. Because that's what we had been running into quite a lot. But no, it looks like we are currently fighting one of the undefended planets, and we should have no trouble bashing through yet another DNF, which we have fought quite a few times. Although hopefully we can play this just a little bit more intelligently than we have in the past. Although we do have our strategy that seems to work quite well of pseudoing everything early on and then turning away to avoid his return pseudo fire. And in fact, I am so sort of convinced of this strategy. We're gonna do you and you set to reinforce because we will need to avoid his plasma hopefully he will go after the k5rb because if he goes for that and we get to avoid all fires we'll be in a great position first of our wild weasels is halfway done so a little bit more and we will have it fully ready to go let's increase the speed of time so that we can get right in on top of him and as soon as he hits about 33 to 35 he'll start to engage here we are yep 33 is where the point he starts shooting with his phasers and 30 is where the photon torpedo is going out. Because he can be quite accurate with those things. Not sure if he got through our reinforcement. 
Select our plasma torpedoes. Get ready to fire. Stand by. Engage all weapons and turn hard to port. Let's get away. He's fired back his plasma torpedoes. He wants to cause as much damage as he can. Turn faster. And he did wild weasel. Excellent. That's exactly what we want. Let's see if we can't get them on this stern shield. Yes, we did. Okay. So the stern shield reinforcement did all the work that we needed to do. We can now set the reinforcement to forward only. He did launch a scatter pack. That's a little annoying, but we can deal with this. And the key thing for us is the amount of firepower that we can dish out with the plasma torpedoes, not the amount of firepower that we can dish out with our phasers. Frankly, we don't have enough phaser power to dish out a whole ton of that. I want to get all these plasma torpedoes off in one go. There we go. We took the hit, but we got all our torpedoes off. And I do want to cloak. Oh, we can't cloak, apparently. How did you... How did you launch another one? Oh, that's really, really bad. Also annoying and confusing and really bad. So the Hampton has managed to cheat. We did not take us a turn to plan that assault. So the fact that he was able to dump another Wild Weasel is not good. Also, we can't afford to stay cloaked here. Let's get uncloaked. Reinforcement to port side. He's going to run us over. At least I would if I were him. Increase speed. We've got to control the we've got to control the distance on this fight. I want all power to engines. Let's start getting things working. Port side reinforcement will hold up. We're not gonna use our phasers all that much until we start getting a hole. His plasma F torpedoes should be charged by now, and that's a problem. That's a significant problem. Let's go shield reinforcement to stern. Uh, no, not reinforce all. I just want the stern torpedo stern ones. Yep, there it is. Incoming fire. Pick up more power, please. I want to burn this down. Unfortunately, he's managing to weaken our forward shield. How much energy we got? Only 5.7, and now we've blown it all. How much damage is it going to hit with? Not much. Okay, that works in our favor. We'll be able to come back around. We're going to have to stagger fire from our plasma torpedoes, because I can't risk another dud barrage. Get that forward shield going at this point, and cut off the stern firing one. See what he does with this plasma torpedo. If this hits and does damage, that'll be really useful. Because right now, the redemption or the redemptio is doing much better than we are. Although that was a mostly useless shot, simply for the range. S-type plasma torpedo ready to rock. Our R-type plasma torpedo still charging. That's a problem. We need that R-type plasma torpedo ready to go. The redemptio dropping mines in his path. He's trying to hurt him a little bit. Excellent. We're, we could really use the assistance on that. The Hampton's starting to fire stern firing phasers in our direction. Once we hit a range of about eight, I'm going to start engaging with the plasma torpedo. The, we'll start with the S-type plasma torpedo, see what he does with that, because they generally tend to try and avoid that one. So plasma out. We're going to try and stick to him like glue. Because I can take him on the forward shields, and as long as I can keep out of his forward arc, we can do quite well here. So forward shield reinforcement getting a little bit higher. Let's hit him with a pair of the Fs. Because I want to bait out anything that he's got. Open that shield up. All up and select. Okay, get the R in there. And he dropped in speed a little bit, but I'm not sure why. Slow down more. Slow down more. I don't want to pass by him, and I want to keep him in this position. This is a really good position for us to be in. Increase speed. Increase speed. So we've managed to bore into him a little bit. We've knocked out one of his phaser ones. A uh, second set of his phaser ones. One of his phaser three mounts and a little bit on his photon torpedoes. We're going to have to bounce this. Hopefully it'll hit one of the side shields and not the stern. Because our stern is badly hurting right now. I want to keep the forward shield on him as best as we can. And sort of focus firepower into that. Let's start getting to work with our phasers. Uh, if we can do enough of that, then uh, we might be able to really help out our plasma torpedoes. This is going to hit the stern where we really can't afford to take it. As long as the stern shield holds, though, we'll be in good condition. Is our defenses on? Yeah, they are. Okay. So we are holding that, no problem. Our phasers will be able to engage through a hole right now. We're another turn and a half away from having S-type plasma torpedo ready to go. That's only one of the plasma torpedoes, too. So continue the starboard turn. As long as we can hold here, we're in good shape. Just as long as we can maintain this position. He's turning away from the incoming plasma torpedo. I'm not quite sure why you would do that. That's going to hurt you decently badly. Phasers, get in there, and S-type plasma torpedo. Come on, hit him Hit him with that S. There we go. Right onto an exposed location. We'll pull away a little bit. We need to build some distance in while we uh, set up for an, our next attack run. I need to start knocking out those phasers he's got in the front. 
Because as soon as those go down, he'll have a serious problem on his hands. So port side plasma F, we're going to start... We're dribbing and drabbing them in, but that's partly by design. And partly because we are only getting so many angles in. He did bounce that off his stern shield. That's not great, but we can work with that. Our forward port and forward starboard shields are offline. That's really bad. We need those. They're very important shields. And our type plasma torpedo should get a shot in here. There it is. And I don't think you'll have the shuttle bay for it. You might. And... Ah, crap. That didn't go off. Yeah, we were too fast for that. We are, thankfully, under cloak. So that means this is going to be a lot less painful than it could have been. He can fire his weapons. They just probably won't hit us. Also, as long as we stay underneath the speed of four, we will get the uh, massive bonus from having that there, which makes the photon torpedoes essentially worthless. Yeah, I wanted to launch the Wild Weasel, but I panicked and hit X instead of W, which, as you can see, hasn't quite worked out for us. He's in a really nasty position on us. Let's decloak, and we will fire everything we've got into him as soon as we can. There we go. A decent hit right there. More power, more power. We need to get the shields around. Ow! That one hurt. That one hurt bad. He got the photon torpedoes right on in. Managed to knock out one of our phasers, which is never... Or one of our plasma torpedoes, which is never good. Yeah, we're in, we're in rough shape. But thankfully, so is he. And we have an S-type plasma torpedo ready to go very shortly. I'd like to pull around and hit one of his open sides right now. That photon torpedo barrage was kind of the last bullet in his gun. At this point, he doesn't have much left. If the Redemptio kills him, I'm going to be super disappointed because we did most of the heavy lifting and hard work. Let's get the repair work going on. We do need to take this planet after all. We basically lost all our armor for the rest of this. That hit alone was, was really nasty on us. Let's pull all the way around. Make sure we get to the right uh, shield facing so that we can deal as much damage as possible. Plasma torpedoes fixed and ready to go. And that ought to hit exactly where we want it. Phasers to follow it up, increase the damage, and shattered him. Excellent. So, enemy defenders are destroyed. Now we can come in for the planet. We're going to send a probe just to sort of verify what we already believe. If this planet is indeed completely unguarded, we'll be in a perfect position to take it. And I'm anticipating, yep, just the phaser three-point defense systems. So we'll be able to set up at a range of just under five, or just under six, and shell the planet with everything we have. We don't have any concerns or any issues that we're going to have to really run into. Wow, I'm really surprised at how much damage he did to our uh, warp system. He took 10 points of ten points of power away from our normal uh, budget. So that was a really good hit by those photon torpedoes. Ugh, very painful. Keep patching it. We've got to stabilize that warp core before we get into range of the planet. Apparently we also have a one of our phaser ones is out. Ah, there we go. And our systems are fully ready to go. Let's slow down the speed of time now that we're actually starting to get close to the planet. To the point where we all could die. That's our main concern right now. And start to slow down, but also increase time and slow down time. And Eight. Seven. Six. All stop. Get ready for a crash stop. Uh, are we going to need it? I don't think we'll need it. We are within a range of five. We can't close within a range of three. Because then we're in range of their phases. Okay, there we are. Perfectly happy here. Engage with all weapons. Start blasting the planet to pieces. So they did try and defend against it. I can't quite read those numbers. The green on the green is not quite visible. But we did a fairly decent amount of damage. Let's check how many uh, people are left. Sixteen. We've got a lot of people to blast our way through. But we will eventually make it. We're not the best sea sh ships out there. We're really designed to skulk and blast things in one titanic wave of plasma. Unfortunately, it takes us three turns to prep our plasma. It's not really our fault. The ship was designed that way, but... It's a minor issue. Not huge, but important. So here we sit with our phasers and plasma blasting away in steady rhythm. Plasma, phasers, causing a really nice amount of damage. Knocking out most of his systems. Boy, is he having problems. Waiting for the system to recharge, and there we go. Down to six, we need to get him down to two. Which, as far as I know, that's the least amount of people you can have on a planet through blasting them. Uh, looks like our transporters are in perfect shape. Uh, don't need to repair anything. 
and we've taken out the last of their uh, defensive weapon systems. So we could if we want wanted to get a little bit closer, but I'm not willing to risk that. And this auto, yep, knocked him down to two. Send all the Marines. Send in the Marines. Let's take care of this properly. Some Marines are currently doing their work, taking over the planet, capturing all the important locations. Well, I suppose technically we are sitting up here in orbit and just shelling the crap out of them. It is a planetary invasion, after all. I would like to style the flip. That would be very, very nice if it did that. Come on, game. Show me what I want to see. 495 prestige. Very nice. Unfortunately, the tile is still Federation, and we kinda gotta go home. South, and then here. Back to the planet. We are at 4,754 prestige. Let's take a quick look through the shipyard, see if anything interesting has shown up. A KVLF. And the KVLF is the most expensive thing right now. It is the King Vulture Early Dreadnought. It is equipped with uh, two R-type plasma torpedoes, two F-type plasma torpedoes, six Phaser 1s, and two Phaser 3s. Unfortunately, not quite on our list of things that we care about. We are, in fact, in a slightly better Dreadnought. I think our Dreadnought's better, anyway. Um, where is our Dreadnought? Is this it? The, uh, the Daemon Hawk? Or do we have something else? Let's actually check since we have our own supply art. We're in SHRF. We also need to patch quite a bit of damage and replace a Wild Weasel that we spent. We keep forgetting we have pseudo frigates. We really do need to remember that because that's pretty important, actually. <laughs> Get us back up to a decent marine count. Thank you. Took quite a bit of cash there. So we are in SHRF, which according to the in-game menu is... Scroll down. Uh, nope, not a heavy cruiser. We are a Dreadnought. All the way down. So there's Omnihawks available, which look interesting. I have no idea what they're for. Keep scrolling, not a DMH. We are in... There we were. We are a Shrike Light Dreadnought. Okay, and there's got to be something bigger and better than us now. 2275, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. I'm looking for something that has a more modern date. Although there is the Mega Hawks now. Although the Mega Hawks have apparently been around since 2276. But that's a pretty impressive amount of firepower. It basically increases, gives us two Plasma Ds. A whole bunch more Phaser 3s and uh, an additional Plasma S. The Megahawk Commando Dreadnoughts. Omnihawk Light Dreadnoughts. I have no idea what these Omnihawks are for. Although they do have a fairly nice Plasma S uh, armament. We may be looking for an Omnihawk next. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I kind of want to avoid the the uh, the K-series battleships. They're basically just Klingon Dreadnoughts that we put Plasma on to, so I'm not super thrilled about taking them. Although King Condor would be really nice to have, although it is sort of the final battleship. So if we get that, uh, that'll be quite far down the road. So patched up, repaired, back home, and resupplied. That is going to end the episode there, continuing to place the pressure here on 13.9. Eventually we will capture it, and it will be a major victory when we finally do. But... I've been Tirak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.